Coming up today, President Park and Hay wraps up her trip to China in Shanghai. She'll attend the reopening ceremony of the headquarters of the Korean provisional government that operated against Japanese colonial occupation. South Korea's chief nuclear envoy will hold talks next week with his counterparts from the United States and China on ways to counter North Korea's nuclear ambitions. Plus, as the misery and fear deepens in Europe, Germany and France call for the fair distribution of refugees throughout the European Union. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6 a.m. on Friday, September 4th here in Seoul. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. We start in China, where President Park and hye is preparing to begin the third and final day of her trip. She's currently in Shanghai. But on Thursday, to much fanfare, the South Korean leader was one of the high-profile attendees rather, at China's massive military parade in Beijing, marking the 70th anniversary of China's victory over Japan in World War II. For a rundown of the day's events, Chaeson reports. Under clear skies, tens of thousands of people gathered at Tiananmen Square to celebrate China's victory in World War II following Japan's surrender 70 years ago. Addressing the crowd, President Xi Jinping paid tribute to the Chinese who fought and defeated Japan's aggressions in the war. Prejudice and discrimination, hatred and war only lead to disaster and pain. We should move towards mutual respect, equality and efforts to achieve a peaceful development. Looking over Tiananmen Square, President Park Geun-hye was seated on President Xi's right, two seats away and next to Russian President Vladimir Putin. This reflects how much Seoul and Beijing's relations have developed in stark contrast to Beijing's ties with traditional ally Pyongyang. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un did not attend with his envoy Choi ryong hye seated a distance from the Chinese leader. Some 12,000 troops, 200 aircraft, as well as tanks and missiles were showcased through the square, and Chinese state media reported that some 80 percent of the machinery was unveiled for the first time. President Park's attendance at the Chinese military parade, the centerpiece of Thursday's ceremonies, garnered media attention after U.S. President Barack Obama and most Western leaders decided not to attend. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was also absent. The Western states view the parade as both anti-Japanese and Beijing's way of flaunting its military prowess amid growing tensions in the region. The Korean president's attendance is viewed as Seoul's way of trying to take the diplomatic initiative in the region and balance its relations with key ally Washington and major regional partner Beijing. President Park is now in Shanghai, where she will attend a ceremony on Friday to mark the reopening of what used to be the headquarters of Korea's provisional government during Japan's colonial rule. Choi yu Sun, Arirang News, Shanghai. So, as you saw there, China announced itself to the world on Thursday as a military superpower. That means business. Now, most watchers say Beijing successfully managed to bring about a swell of national pride at home and awe around the world. For a look at some of the latest state-of-the-art uh, weaponry sent through the streets of the Chinese capital, Kim Hyun-bin reports. China's mass military parade marking the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II showcased Beijing's ever-growing military might. The largest military parade to date, taking some 90 minutes, showcased over 500 state-of-the-art weaponry and formation. With all the weaponry being fully made in China, 84 percent of that weaponry was revealed publicly for the first time. Kickstarting the parade, China's President Xi Jinping announced Beijing will reduce its current 2.3 million standing army by 300,000 troops. But he gave no specific deadline. Among the newly displayed weapons were anti-ship ballistic missiles, dubbed the Dongfeng 21D, which are reportedly able to destroy an aircraft carrier with a single blow. Several intercontinental ballistic missiles were also revealed, including the DF-26, nicknamed the Guam Killer, in reference to the U.S. Pacific Fleet base. According to Chinese state-run media, H-6K mid-range strategic bombers 
China's main battle tanks, the ZTZ-96A, and numerous anti-tank missiles were also revealed. Experts say the huge muscle flexing parade gives China some leeway in diverting attention from its country's slowing economy, its near stock market collapse, and the Tianjin warehouse blast that killed over 150 people last month. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. South Korea will hold back-to-back -back meetings with nuclear envoys from China and the United States next week to discuss ways to counter North Korea's nuclear ambitions. The foreign ministry says Seoul's envoy Hwang jung guk will travel to Washington to hold talks with his American counterpart Sung Kim. A Chinese delegation will visit Seoul later in the week for more talks on this issue. A ministry official added that the chief nuclear envoys from South Korea, the U.S. and Japan plan to hold a trilateral meeting in time for the U.N. General Assembly at the end of this month. The floor leader of Korea's main opposition party is calling for a, an overhaul of domestic conglomerates and to level the playing field for small and mid-sized firms. In his address to the National Assembly on Thursday, Lee Jong-gol also urged greater efforts to improve inter-Korean relations. Jim Young gil reports. The New Politics Alliance for Democracy floor leader emphasized proclaiming a second season of economic democratization. This, he says, may be achieved through empowering smaller companies and reforming the family-owned conglomerates, or tebal, which dominate the South Korean economy. Our goal is to reform the governance structure of conglomerates by separating their ownership and management. For smaller companies, we will support R&D through improved financing. For subcontractors, we will ensure fair trade to raise their competitiveness. He also called for new regulations to control or even ban existing cross-shareholding arrangements that give Tebal owners dictatorial power over their companies. He said measures are needed to restrict an owner's family from controlling such vast business empires, and that steps need taking to urge transparency in their management structures. On North Korea matters, he said the time is now right to resume dialogue between the two Koreas. I suggest President Park Geun-hye and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to hold summit talks before the year's end. I also suggest inter-Korean parliamentary talks to jointly commemorate the 70th anniversary of Korea's independence from Japan this year. He added that what we learned from last month's military standoff with North Korea is that dialogue is the only solution to maintaining peace and security on the Korean peninsula. He called for increasing civilian exchanges and restoring military hotlines between the two Koreas. As the MPAD floor leader, Yi pointed out that more trade and economic cooperation with North Korea can benefit the South Korean economy at a period of slow growth. Kim Young-gyu, Arirang News. Now, as Europe's refugee crisis continues to worsen, Germany and France have agreed that the European Union should impose binding quotas on the number of people member states take in. German Chancellor Angela Merkel says the old approach is not working anymore because so many refugees are arriving at the EU's external borders that Europe can't leave Italy or Greece alone to deal with the task. European Council President Donald Tusk is calling for the fair distribution of at least 100,000 refugees among EU states. Now, Britain is expected to announce plans to accept more refugees after the government there came under intense pressure to act following the release of some shocking photos highlighting the scale of the crisis. This as there was total chaos in Hungary as thousands of refugees refused to leave a train to go into a refugee camp. Authorities in France have confirmed that airplane debris found on a remote island in the Indian Ocean belongs to the missing Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 that disappeared around 18 months ago. French prosecutors made the announcement on Thursday saying the paint colour and a serial number found on the airplane part known as a flapperon corresponded to the missing Boeing 777 aircraft. The confirmation comes over a month after the debris was discovered on the shore of the French-governed island of Reunion in late July. The plane disappeared in March last year en route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing with 239 passengers and crew on board, most of them Chinese. 
The International Monetary Fund says the U.S. Federal Reserve can afford to maintain low rates for the time being and wait until there are more tangible signs of wage or price inflation in the country. At a press briefing in Washington on Thursday, IMF spokesman William Murray said the Fed has room to postpone raising interest rates this month and to proceed gradually with its plan. Murray stressed that while the IMF expects central banks in economies like Britain and the US to begin raising rates eventually, given an acceleration of growth in those countries, there was still time to wait before making the first step. The Fed is currently considering whether to increase its benchmark interest rate, which has remained at the zero level, or near zero at least, since December 2008. Now, influenza vaccines typically take about six months to produce, which often leads to a shortage in the case of a sudden outbreak. But that may no longer be a recurring problem as Korea has commercialised its first cell culture vaccine that's expected to shorten and simplify the manufacturing process. Park Se-young reports. During the 2009 flu pandemic, the shortage in the supply of the drug Tamiflu caused concern. Most conventional flu vaccines are cultivated in fertilized chicken eggs and take several months to produce, which can result in demand outweighing supply in the event of an outbreak. But now Korea's SK Chemicals has commercialized the nation's first cell culture influenza vaccine. The new method, which uses kidney cells from dogs to cultivate the influenza virus, cuts the production time by half. The traditional egg-based technology takes about six months. Cell culture systems reduce that time to two to three months, which allows for quicker manufacturing of more doses in the case of an influenza outbreak. According to clinical trials, the new vaccine is just as effective, if not better, than existing ones. It's also safe for those allergic to eggs or sensitive to antibiotics. The vaccine is the world's second cell culture influenza vaccine developed for adults and the first for children and people under the age of 18. The results from tests on children between the ages of 6 months and 18 years show that the vaccines are as effective or more than the existing ones. They were also proven to be safe. The new vaccine is expected to be delivered to medical institutions throughout the country this month. SK Chemicals hopes to bring about change in the domestic market that currently relies heavily on imported vaccines with plans to eventually penetrate the overseas market. Park Se-young, Arirang News. For a while now, it's been common for Asian art professionals to use Western arts and philosophy as guidelines for their work rather than their own Asian roots. But Korea's southwestern city of Gwangju is trying to change all that with the opening of the Asian Arts Theatre. Kim Jion reports. Gwangju, known as the Korean City of Light, is expected to soon become a global platform for contemporary art. And at the center of it stands the 13,000 square meter Asian Arts Theater, which opens on Friday. With a lineup of some 40 productions over the next three weeks, the arts venue aims at becoming a space where participating artists can communicate and understand the influence their Asian identities have on their work. Among the performance pieces stand out Paling, based on Malaysia's 1955 Baling talks. Performers reenact the time when national leaders tried to resolve the country's division, failing to do so and leading to the creation of Malaysia and Singapore. Mark Tay says the Korean audience can easily relate to his work as a similar scenario took place in Korea's history. And it's interesting to see how in a slightly different part of the world, uh, our leaders were making similar choices. The next piece I want to do is called The Complete Future of Malaysia, which is into the future. And we would be very happy if we have the opportunity, if we get invited again, to um, you know, do it uh, at the Asian uh, Cultural Center, the Asian Arts Theater. And also a project that's asking lots of pertinent questions about, um, well, Asia right now and uh, what it means and the many things that it could mean. Kim ji Arirang News, Gwangju.
Well, that's all we have for now. I'm Mark Broom. Have a great weekend and thank you as always for tuning in. We do hope to see you at the same time on Monday. Until then, goodbye.